In Middle-earth, there are awe-inspiring locations like Rivendell, Lothlorien, and the Grey Havens that capture the imagination, but there are also sinister, desolate places tainted by the touch of evil. These ominous domains, sometimes inhabited by dark lords and sometimes by their malevolent minions, have cast a shadow of terror over Middle-earth for centuries. Hello everyone, and welcome to Middle-earth. I am your guide, Dragon. Today I will share with you 13 evil locations within Middle-earth. Firstly, I'd like to point out that the locations I will discuss in this video are not ranked by their level of wickedness, but rather by the ages to which they belong. We'll begin with the most chilling ones. During his time in Middle-earth, Melkor, who later became known as Morgoth, established two vast underground fortresses as his strongholds. The first and largest of these was Utumno, also referred to as Udin. You might recall this name from Gandalf's confrontation with the Balrog in Moria. The fire of Udin that Gandalf mentioned has its origins here. Melkor used this underground castle as a base to sabotage the efforts of the other Valar. However, the dungeons and pits of Utumno also bore witness to perhaps the most heinous act Melkor ever committed. He captured some of the newly awakened elves, and through dark sorcery and torture, transformed them into orcs who would plague Middle-earth for millennia. Utumno was ultimately destroyed and wiped out by the Valar during the War of Powers. However, Melkor possessed another underground fortress besides Utumno. This stronghold, known as Angband, was situated further west. When Melkor was captured by the Valar during the War of Powers, they destroyed Utumno but did not delve deeper into Angband, leaving it partially intact. While Melkor remained a prisoner in the hands of the Valar, Sauron took control of Angband, allowing orcs to multiply and balrogs to gather, ensuring the fortress was operational when Melkor returned. Throughout the First Age of the Sun, Angban served as a base from which Melkor's malevolent power spread across Middle-earth. With its back to the Iron Mountains, Angban's strategic position was highly advantageous. The full extent of Melkor's stronghold remains unclear, but it is known that tens of thousands of orcs thrived there, and dragons were bred and nurtured. When Fingolfin arrived at the gates of this formidable fortress, he recognized that the elves could not fully subdue it. Yet he managed to keep it under siege for centuries. Ultimately, Melkor emerged victorious, breaking the siege and unleashing his forces. During this period, Fortress became a site of torment for countless elves and men. Melkor's wickedness transformed the castle's surroundings into a barren wasteland. However, in the end, after the War of Wrath, Angban, like Beleriand, was submerged and destroyed. One of the terrifying locations of the First Age is a region called Lameth. It was here that Melkor, who had stolen the Silmarils and destroyed the Great Trees by having the spider Ungoliant consume their essence, engaged in a fierce battle with Ungoliant herself. In exchange for her help, Ungoliant had demanded that Melkor satiate her hunger by giving her the Silmarils. When Melkor refused, she attacked him and ensnared him in her webs. In that moment, Melkor let out a terrifying scream, so loud, that it was heard all the way in Angband, which consequently spurred the Balrogs to come to their master's aid. However, it is said that Melkor's scream did not fade, but instead continued in an unending echo. As a result, until Beleriion was submerged, no human or elf ventured into this place unless absolutely necessary. In the First Age, the sinister locations influenced by Ungoliant were not limited to Lameth alone. After the Balrogs intervened, Ungoliant abandoned Melkor and settled in a region to the southeast. This area came to be known as Nandungorthub, or the Valley of Dreadful Death. It was here that Ungoliant spawned her own repulsive offspring by breeding with the spiders native to the region. At times, she would consume them, while other times, she would mate with them. Those who drank from the water that flowed through this area were filled with despair and driven to madness. As a result, this place became extremely perilous, so much so that even Melkor's forces were fearful of entering. For an entire age, this region instilled terror in all those nearby. Though it was submerged along with Beleriand, the descendants of Ungoliant continued to thrive elsewhere. Another location in the First Age started as a benevolent place, but turned sinister when it fell into the clutches of evil. 
The island of Tulsirian and the Tower of Minas Tirith above it were among the earliest structures built by elves or men. Tol Sirian, a small island in the Valley of Sirian on the River Sirian, was home to a tower called Minas Tirith, built by Finrod to watch over the valley. However, Melkor's forces eventually captured the island and tower, and his top commander, Sauron, took residence there. It is said that when Sauron stood atop the tower, no creature, large or small, could escape his gaze, as he observed everyone traversing the valley. Consequently, the island and tower became known as Tol and Gorhoth, the island of werewolves. During the quest for the Silmaril, Baron and Finrod were imprisoned here, leading to Finrod's death. Baron was later rescued by Luthien and Juan, the great hound of the Valar. Juan defeated most of the wolves, and ultimately, Sauron in his werewolf form was vanquished and forced to flee. After his escape, the tower was cleared, but it remained uninhabited until it was destroyed along with Beleriand. This brings us to the Second Age. The most fearsome place that haunted Middle-earth during the Second and Third Ages was undoubtedly Mordor, with Sauron's tower, Barad-dûr, at its heart. Very few individuals have seen these places and returned. Mordor was a heavily fortified region, surrounded by impassable mountains on three sides, making it an ideal breeding ground for Sauron's orcs. In the year 1000 of the Second Age, Sauron arrived here and initiated his schemes. The construction of his fortress, Barad-dûr, took 600 years, and it became one of the grandest fortresses after First Age. The only person other than Sauron's own servants who we know to have entered and left this great tower is Gollum. Mordor and Barad-dûr served as Sauron's dwelling for centuries, and no trees or plants grew there due to the proximity of Mount Doom. At the end of the Second Age, the last alliance of elves and men defeated Sauron and destroyed Barad-dûr. However, the tower's foundations remained intact, and it was rebuilt upon Sauron's return in the Third Age. The fortress was completely demolished during the War of the Ring at the end of the Third Age, when Sauron and his tower fell, bringing light back to Mordor. But it is unknown if anyone settled there in the Fourth Age. Another sinister location that persisted from the beginning of the Second Age until the end of the Third Age is the Paths of the Dead. Initially inhabited by the Dunlendings, this area turned malevolent after a fateful incident. The Dunlendings had sworn to aid Gondor's King Isildur in his battle against Sauron, but when called upon, they broke their vow and refused to help. Isildur cursed them, decreeing that they would remain in this place, unable to die, until one of his descendants called upon them to fulfill their promise. Consequently, these cursed souls lingered along the paths of the dead. No living creature, be it elf, human, or animal, dared to tread in this area. The paths of the dead is said to be dark, cold, and filled with whispering spirits speaking in an unintelligible language. During the War of the Ring, Isildur's heir, Aragorn, entered the path and called upon the dead to honor their pledge. This time, the dead answered his call, and Aragorn ultimately released them from their curse. The fate of the Path of the Dead following the war remains unknown. As we journey into the Third Age, we come across Dol Guldur, a place that was not initially evil but later transformed into a bastion of darkness. Amon Lank, where Dol Guldur stands, was once inhabited by the Sylvan Elves. However, Sauron seized it after his return to Middle-earth, following Numenor's fall, causing the Elves to flee. When Sauron re-emerged in the Third Age, he occupied an abandoned fortress in Amon Lank and began to consolidate his power there. The location was renamed Dol Guldur, or the Hill of Dark Sorcery. Sauron later filled the surrounding forest with malevolent creatures and nurtured his sinister plans. Gandalf and Galadriel suspected that Necromancer in Dol Guldur was Sauron himself, but they were persuaded by Saruman to wait and watch. Consequently, Sauron resided there for centuries. Eventually, Gandalf infiltrated the fortress and confirmed that the necromancer was indeed Sauron. Following this revelation, Sauron retreated to Mordor, but the evil creatures in Dol Guldur persisted until they were vanquished by Galadriel and the elves, who destroy the castle, from its walls all the way to its tower. 
Yet another location that fell into darkness after being corrupted by evil forces is Mirkwood. This forest, originally known as the Great Green Forest, was once home to the Sylvan Elves. However, Sauron's malicious creatures filled the area after his arrival in Dol Guldur. The forest grew darker and more dangerous, particularly due to the presence of numerous spiders, which may have been descendants of Ungoliant. As a result, the elves retreated to the northeastern part of the forest, while the spiders spread throughout the area. Mirkwood became a perilous place, and much like Nandungortheb, where Ungoliant resided, drinking water from the rivers there proved hazardous. Eventually, along with the wicked creatures in Dol Guldur, the inhabitants of Mirkwood were also purged, and the forest returned to being a safe haven once more. Approximately 300 years after Sauron's arrival in Dol Guldur, a realm was established in the west of Middle-earth by the leader of the Ringwraiths. This territory, named Angmar, harbored a single objective, to utterly annihilate Arnor, which had been founded by Elendil. Consequently, the Ringwraith who founded this domain became known as the Witch King of Angmar. The heart of this realm, situated north of the Misty Mountains, was the city called Karndum. As centuries passed, Angmar evolved into a menacing place where men and orcs hostile to Gondor and Arnor congregated. Naturally, none of the free peoples could venture into this region. Ultimately, Angmar achieved its intended goal. With the downfall of the three splintered kingdoms of Arnor, its mission was complete. The Witch King then shifted his focus to Gondor, and Angmar was abandoned. Moria, one of the most significant locations in the Third Age, fell into the hands of evil and transformed into a cursed place. This magnificent dwarven stronghold met its tragic fate in 1980, when a Belrog that had escaped the destruction of Beleriand was awakened. The Belrog slaughtered the dwarves residing there, with only a few survivors managing to escape. From that point on, the former dwarven domain became a haven for orcs, who rapidly populated the area. Under the rule of the Belrog and the Orcs, very few individuals dared to venture into Moria. Among them was the wizard Gandalf, who later defeated the Belrog during the War of the Ring. Following the war, the Orcs were eradicated, and the Dwarves reclaimed their ancestral home. Another location that fell under the control of the Witch King was Minas Ithil, constructed in the Second Age by Isildur, son of Elendil. Due to its proximity to Mordor, this stronghold was frequently targeted by Sauron and was eventually captured by the Witch King following a lengthy siege in the year 2002 of the Third Age. The city rapidly transformed, adopting the new name Minas Morgul, meaning Tower of Sorcery, and emanating a ghastly light. The water that flowed through the city became undrinkable and released a noxious vapor, no vegetation or wildlife remained near Minas Morgul, and its malevolent influence spread to Ithilien, forcing Gondor's civilian population to abandon the area. After the war, Minas Morgul remained uninhabited for an extended period before it was eventually rebuilt, allowing people to return. In this final spine-chilling location of the video, situated right next to Minas Morgul, a narrow staircase ascends before transitioning into a dark tunnel that leads to Kirith Ungol. This is the lair of Shelob, one of Ungoliant's daughters, and perhaps the most formidable spider in her bloodline. Engulfed in darkness due to Shelob's disdain for light, the area became filled with the skeletons of orcs and other creatures consumed by the spider throughout the years. The lair, resembling a labyrinth, was known to Sauron and his orcs. It is likely that Frodo and Sam, who ventured into the lair during the War of the Ring, were the first survivors in centuries. Sam confronted the spider using Frodo's sword, Sting, wounding it and forcing it to flee. The fate of Shelob after the war remains uncertain, but it can be assumed that the area was cleared during the restoration of Minas Morgul. So that's it a concise summary of 13 of the most malevolent locales in Middle-earth. Many of these places possess more intricate tales, which will be delved into further in separate videos. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Until we meet again, take care and farewell.